Thank you everyone for joining the 2020-2021 National Honor Society and National Junior Honor Society induction ceremony. I'm Ms. Kelly Smith and I am the faculty advisor for the National Honor Society. We would also like to extend a warm welcome to our guest speaker, Dr. Faisal Bari, who is the current Dean of Education at LUMS. As the advisor for NHS, I would now like to introduce our current members. Hamza Haq, President. Rania Jawad Khan, Vice President. Mazum Salman and Jassim Butt, Co-Secretaries. Samir Nasir, Treasurer. Osed Khan. Zaina Rizwan, Mustafa Guman, Dani Hussein, Haram Gulzar, Sarah Askar Ali, Momina Rana, Juni Khan, Mehma Rashid, Ishan Mughal, Iman Naufel, and Brandon Fielder. This year's new inductees for the National Honor Society are Mashal Tarar, Halima Qureshi, Abu Bakr Gulzar, Ali Haroon, Hanya Sharik, Manal Sharar, Muhammad Musa, and Sarah Asghar Ali. I would also like to now introduce the new inductees for the National Junior Society. The current members this year already are Ishal Gufran and Noor Rizwan. The new inductees to the National Junior Honor Society for this year are Ryan Rahim, Ryan Khan, Tayab Sheikh, Arina Shami, Mahira Akbar, Sharez Faisal Bhatti, and Arsal Shami, and Mariam Zarar. Now our president Hamza Haq and our vice president Rania Khan and Ishal Gufran, the president of NJHS, will lead the ceremony of induction as the MCs. Okay, so good, good morning everyone and welcome to the induction ceremony. Today, these students before you will be inducted into a society that was created by the National Association of Secondary School Principals in 1921 in the United States for the purpose of recognizing students committed to education and service, while also challenging students to develop their skills further. By exemplifying these standards, the individual student members of the society promote positive awareness and enthusiasm for education and service in our school and our community. To be invited to join the society, a candidate must be a high school student enrolled in grades nine through 12, for NHS and grades six through eight for NJHS, with a minimum 3.5 cumulative GPA must demonstrate characteristics of the five pillars of the society, which are service, scholarship, character, citizenship, and leadership, maintain good academic standing in all courses and demonstrate strong moral character, integrity, and a passion for serving their community. The National Honor Society was able to accomplish a lot this year, despite the obvious constraints of the pandemic. We conducted our annual Pink Week entirely virtually, and it was a wonderful success. We hosted an online showcase for breast cancer awareness related art, as well as had our Pink Out Day. We had a breast cancer awareness presentation, as well as inspiring guest speakers. In addition, to help alleviate the end of semester stress our student body may have been facing, we created a comical yet motivational video to keep everyone's spirits up. Lastly, we created an online peer tutoring program on our virtual learning platform, which we are continuing to make improvements on. Overall, the National Honor Society has made the best of this year, even during such a difficult time. Despite the obstacles faced due to this pandemic, the NJHS was able to adapt and achieve various things this year. Our annual Pink Week was held entirely virtually and we were able to understand the and we were able to successfully pull it off. The NJHS created a website to help elementary students better understand the purpose of Pink Week. Additionally, we also attended the first ever Spark Leadership Conference to help us improve our leadership skills. Lastly, 
For safer internet, we created Google Slides to show the student body how truly important it is to stay safe online. Overall, we were able to adapt to all the obstacles that were in our way and make sure this year was a success. Now we would like to move on to the five pillars of NHS and NJHS starting with our web service. The service criterion is considered highly important for membership selection at the National Honor Society. Service is considered to be those actions taken by any student which are done without any direct material return or compensation to the individual performing the service. In considering service, the contributions that said candidate has made to not only the school, but to his or her classmates and the community at large, as well as their attitude towards this, uh, this service is thoroughly reviewed to ensure that someone is a fit for this society. As part of the NHS standards, one must be willing and able to take on difficult and time consuming responsibilities and provide service to the surrounding community and their own community, which has proven to be a necessity in society today. The act of service, uh, the act of serving the community, not only to supplement the college application, but instead for the common and collective good uh, is what distinguishes an NHS candidate from any ordinary one and is a value that must never be lost within society. The National Honor Society seeks scholarship in the, ha in the hearts and minds of our students. It is a representation of our commitment to education as well as the NHS community. Having achieved this standard means to give your best work, regardless of the impeding reward. In order to achieve this pillar, a student must be willing to invest time to develop its mind in the quest for knowledge. Diligence and effort is crucial for one to achieve this standard. The NHS also looks for its members to demonstrate the highest levels of character. Though this can be hard at times, the NHS expects its members to always uphold this standard. A person of good character is responsible, trustworthy, fair, honest, and caring. A person of good character is always willing to take constructive criticism, is courteous and respectful to their peers, and is punctual, concentrated, and disciplined. In short, it can be said that all members of the NHS are guided by a solid moral compass and always work hard to instill these values in yourselves to be exemplary members of the NHS and an example to the entire student body. Citizenship is a responsibility to the community. It is a measure of dedication and devotion towards society. It is your place and role and promise to understand the concerns and strengths of that community. Being a part of the National Honor Society, citizenship is demonstrated through mature participation and active involvement in what your community has to offer. It reflects through honesty, compassion, and commitment. The expectation is for you to respect the institution and its values, and more importantly, who represents it. Leadership. The NHS requires its members to embody leadership in every aspect of life. This pillar of the National Honor Society is integrated in the pillars of citizenship, character, and service because leadership is not an elected office. It is a quality. It is the quality of working in a group, motivating people, making everyone feel equal and important, considering everyone's suggestions and helping in making the best decision for the group. Leaders possess a clear vision as well as the motivation and drive to turn the vision into a reality. They possess the patience and tenacity to think critically and rationally amidst chaos. The members of the National Honor Society uphold and exemplify this characteristic. Thank you to the NHS members for mentioning the five pillars that make up the society. Now, I would like to call upon the new inductees to raise your right hand and, and repeat the pledge after me. I pledge myself. Can all the new inductees please raise their right hand and re repeat after me. I pledge myself. I pledge myself. I pledge myself. To uphold the high purposes. To uphold the high purposes. Of the National Honor Society. 
of the National Honor Society. And the National Junior Honor Society. And the National Junior Honor Society. To which I have been selected. To which, to which I, I have been selected. I will be true to the principles. I will be true to the principles. For which it stands. For which it stands. Which it stands. I will be loyal to my school. I will be loyal to my school. And will man maintain and encourage. And will maintain and encourage. High standards of all four pillars. High standards of all five pillars. Scholarship. Scholarship. Service. 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 Leadership. Leadership. Citizenship. Citizenship. And character. And character. Congratulations to all the new inductees. Thank you. Thank you. To conclude today's NHS and NJHS induction ceremony, I would like to introduce our guest speaker, Dr. Faisal Bari. He is the current Dean of Education at LUMS and has over 15 years of experience in education. Aside from working at LUMS, Dr. Bari is a senior research fellow at the Institute of Development and Economic Alternatives, Pakistan. He served as the deputy country director for Pakistan with the Central Eurasia Project and is also the education economist for South Asia at the Open Society Foundation. He has consulted for the United Nations Development Program here in Pakistan, and he writes biweekly columns for Dawn on Education as well. Without further ado, his talk on the future of education. Hi, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be speaking to you at uh, the, the Our American School and to the Honor Society. My name is Faisal Bari. I am the Dean of uh, School of Education at Lahore University of Management Sciences. Um, I'm going to be talking about the future of education to you. Um, so I've spent the last 15, 20 years doing research in education and continue to do that. And uh, a few of the lessons that have come to mind that might be important for you is, um, uh, for everyone to think about is that what is, you know, what is education? How do we think about it? Um, if we, so education in some ways is, to me, is a conversation. It's a conversation with gen across generations. So what we're doing is when we're talking to children, uh, we're trying to bring them up into that conversation that has been going on for a long time. It is across generations. It's a, um, it's a part of becoming human, right? We are in body, shape, mind there, but we are not there in terms of culture, in terms of community, language, ideas, uh, what is worth preserving, what is not worth preserving, and the evolution of our ethics, etc., etc. That's the conversation we have across generations, and that's what education is. There is obviously a skill part to it as well. There's a literacy part, skill part, all of those are important, but it is within that larger package of the conversation that we have with generations. And so across generations, some skills will change, some other things will change, but that conversation of trying to become a human that gets involved in those conversations of being, of citizenship, of society, that's the part of, of education which is the most important. Now, now what will be, uh, so how do you, I mean, and when things change very fast, like they are in modern times, uh, in, in, in modern societies, what are the basic skills that you will need? These are not skills that are specific to any particular trade. So what you have to have is skills that allow you to be flexible, right? Markets are changing very fast. So gone are the days when you said, I want to be a doctor because doctor is always in demand. I want to be a lawyer because lawyer is always in demand. I don't think one should be looking at education in those skill terms, etc. Yes, if you like some area, sure, you want to go into that, explore that. But what you want is skills that allow you to um, work well in that field and transition as the uh, needs change um, for the society as well. Of course, this also means that in modern times, in, in looking at the future, 
you will always be required to be comfortable with machines and with electronics and with obviously uh, computers and so on and artificial intelligence and so on and so forth. That's increasingly become. So being comfortable with those is very important. How far you go into it is up to you because that's a choice. You can be a user, you can be a maker, you can be any of those things, but comfort level has to be there. So the basic skills that you need uh, for education of tomorrow really have to do with languages will always remain. Comfort level with um, you know, both language and mathematics will always remain. Those are prerequisites in some ways to any education, anything that you want to do. And then beyond that, you should have enough uh, education that allows you critical thinking, it allows you to stand on your own, it allows you to have confidence in your abilities, that you can, even if you don't know anything, you have the confidence that I'll be able to pick it up and I will be able to read on it and I'll be able to master it eventually. That's what a good bachelor's education is, right? Bachelor's education, for example, or 16 years of education, it's not about making you into an uh, expert in anything. It's about teaching you to learn how to learn. And if you get that part right, then you can basically pick up any skill later that you want to. And having that flexibility is very important um, for modern times. Um, recently, I was listening to a lecture from Daron Asimov, who is a professor at Harvard. And one of the things he said was that the workplace is going to change very fast over the next 15, 20, 30, 40 years. So having that confidence, that basic ability, and the ability to be flexible is what will keep you on the edge and keep changing according to the needs of your particular situation. So um, if, you're if you're talking about the current education system in Pakistan, there are major changes that we need, right? Our quality of education is poor. Our, the inequity and inequality in the system is just so large that this is not no way no decent way to actually educate uh, the children of our society, especially when we are promising every child an equality of opportunity and every child access to quality education. That's not happening and that needs to change. Um, what also needs to change is the way we teach, the way we examine, the way we give skills, right? Most of Pakistani system is based on rote learning and, and reproducing things, etc. All of that needs to change significantly. If we are going to have independently thinking people who can make their own decisions, who can do their critical uh, thinking, who can be involved in any debate, etc. That requires a very different kind of education uh, than what we are giving, where largely right now what we're giving is basically uh, learning things and reproducing them, and that has to go. Um, in terms of the five leadership, uh, sorry, the five pillars that the society has, I mean, all of them are very important. It's very hard to say, um, to, to, uh, put a priority list in a hierarchy across them. But if I had to do it, I would take character first. I think um, if you grow up to have um, a strong character that has the ability to distinguish between right and wrong, that has the flexibility to think through and to have empathy with others, to, to be able to put yourself in other person's shoes. That I think is the basis for a lot of other things that you want to do in life. Mm -hmm. So we would like to thank Dr. Bari for making this induction ceremony even more memorable. And on behalf of NHS and NJHS, thank you everyone for joining us today and closing this chapter for the 2020 to 2021 induction ceremony. Thank you. I would like to give a small shout out to our senior class, specifically the senior members. So Asad, Zena, Haram, Ghani, and me. Go seniors, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Hamza and Rania, for your leadership throughout the year. Also, our other officers, Jassim, Mazum, and Samir. Uh, it was a good year. We persevered, and I think we are all excited to have all of these new members officially inducted into NHS and NJHS. And we will miss our seniors very much, but uh, I'm looking forward to an excellent year next year full of new projects hopefully in person. Thank you for attending the induction ceremony. And you're officially part of NHS and NJHS. Congratulations.
congratulations guys congratulations guys congratulations congratulations congratulations